this is Josh here, and as you can see, I am at Cannon's Wonderland. Uh, this will actually be my last visit this season, and we're going to actually be checking out Halloween Haunt as well tonight. Um, if my footage is a little bit shaky, I apologize. I uh, like the dumbass I am and the excitement I was in. I forgot to bring my regular camera, so I'm shooting this a little bit differently. Hopefully you guys still enjoy it nonetheless, and hopefully you guys enjoy all that uh, is offered here today at Cannon's Wonderland at Halloween Haunt. So in the front entrance, as always, is an awesome display that they set up for Halloween Haunt. Uh, take you a quick uh, little tour around it and see if there's any little Easter eggs or anything like that, like they do at other sites. And you can see this guy is here from last year, crawling out of the ground. And uh, let's see what else we got. We got, this is new up here at the very front. I'm gonna walk around these people so I don't get in their photos. But right here in the front, we got this awesome guy cooking up a chicken. Nothing scarier than a chicken. And then there you go with all the houses and everything like that up there in the back. You have tombstones as always. Sadly, I don't see any tributes to Skyrider like they've done at other parks with their fallen rides. But that's okay. No worries. But this guy's biking to somewhere. Biking out of hell. Like I said last year, he's still doing it this year. And you got a spider here, and then that's it. So we're gonna go through the park, get some more construction updates, and enjoy Wonderland by day before we enjoy Halloween Hunt by night. So as we head over to uh, Medieval Fair, you can see that all the decorations and theming is out, and the skeletons are out, and also peeking around the corner, you can see that the ogre is out and active during the day too. If you ever want to see the back side of an ogre. And yes, that is Leviathan going crazy behind me. Let's get over here. Over here, just past the entrance to Medieval Fair, is Wonderland Theater, and as I've mentioned a few times before, this is where Toxicity plays, and if I get a chance later on, I will check this out. Um, don't know if it's changed up much this year. And uh, here's the marketplace with their pumpkins out front and all that good stuff. So, I know they've tried to do some stuff this year to address the crowding issues that were over here by uh, uh, Riptide and everything like that, so they've moved mazes around, but they still have courtyard mazes. They got two of them in there. Uh, Club Blood and Bloodshed, I believe, are over there. We will be doing Fright Lane with Skeleton Keys later on, and I will give you guys spoiler reviews. So, just uh, like I always say, I'll give you guys warning before I say anything, and I'll try to put uh, timestamps and stuff. And uh, hopefully, you guys will enjoy the reviews of those. And as uh, I will spoil them, so be prepared. And it looks, not shockingly, like a very, very quiet day here. Now, over here was something that I saw, which was really cool. I saw this online and I'm looking forward to this tonight. And that is something that's called Sink the Jerk, which uh, is very different for uh, Wonderland. And what they are doing here is they have a target that you can aim at. And you can see a chair up there where there is a guy sitting there, a character, yelling and insulting people as they wait, or as they try to uh, knock him off of the, uh, the chair into the very cold water here at Arthur's Bay. So I will be definitely checking that out later. Over here by the uh, milk can game is the sci-fi house. A uh, very cool, uh, very well done house. Typically not scary, but very, very well themed. So we'll see if they uh, pick up the stairs at all this year. You're on tonight? Just here outside of Thunder Run, uh, Wonderland is, like I mentioned earlier, testing virtual reality on its ride. Um, I will fully admit I'm very skeptical on the idea. I did not know what to expect. I don't understand the idea of coming to a theme park, which is escaping reality, just to escape the theme park. But all of that being said, I will eat my words because that was freaking awesome. Um, the animation was super smooth. The motion was great. The quality was amazing. 
Uh, previous reports said you could not wear your glasses, but that is actually inaccurate. You are able to wear your glasses. Um, so if you are coming to Wonderland, be sure to come and check out the virtual reality experience here. Um, it is very, very cool and you still get the sensation of riding the coaster and you get the sensation of the VR experience as well, which I was very, very happy with. So uh, yeah, come check it out and experience the uh, VR that you'll probably be seeing in parks in the near future. So just like last year, uh, Planet Snoopy has been converted into Camp Spooky for Halloween fun on Saturdays and Sundays in October. I'm gonna go through right now and show you some of the stuff that happens in there. Usually they have trick-or-treating where kids can come dressed up as their favorite Halloween characters or whatever characters and uh, get some candy. And they have a couple little mazes that you can walk through. So one of the things they have here is the uh, treasure hunt, which I mentioned is like a little scavenger hunt that kids can go on and do some trick-or-treating. And uh, instead of these scary decorations, they have very friendly decorations like that. So it's a very kid-friendly event, obviously, over here in Camp Spooky. And because it's like a good area with a lot of trees, you can actually start seeing all the leaves in, the, uh, in front of me start changing for uh, fall time. And over here you have the Peanuts characters that I believe are dressed up for Halloween. So let's take a quick look at that. Yep. There you go. Which is very cool. And of course, always good fun is Boo Blasters. But I will not be doing that. So we have Vampire Maze, Pirate Maze, and Corn Maze. Ooh, nothing scarier than corn. No decorations. Oh, we got some pumpkins out randomly. Probably uh, got a good deal on those. Over here in Kidsville, another thing that you can do here with your kids is pumpkin decorating. Pay $3, you get yourself a little mini pumpkin, and you can decorate it any which way you want, which is pretty cool. And then over this way, we're going to get back into the out stuff now. Um, chose against doing the kids' mazes because I was a little bit busy, and I uh, wouldn't have gotten too good of footage in there, so chose against that. And now I am walking over here to show you guys something cool. And you guys will see this later on tonight when I am back here for Halloween Hot. And that is the entrance to Spirit Manor. And uh, as you can see, there it is there. It's a little bit dark, but uh, Spirit Manor entrance is there. And then as I showed you in previous video, the haunt itself is way back there in the maze. So we will be checking that out later tonight. Back here by the Action Theater. Um, is where the new maze for this year is, Spirit Manor. And you can see the finished facade there. Of course, we will be here later on to check it out. They've uh, completely gutted the second theater, so uh, nothing can come from that ever again. But the first theater is still open, so we might see something there in the near future, like all those video game things. And like several years going now, Cornstalkers is the maze of choice if you are coming back here to where uh, Whitewater Canyon normally is. And in case you really don't know, uh, Whitewater Canyon is kind of close to the season. Um, so there's the sign for Cornstalkers, which is super cool as always. And you can check out the uh, reason why it's close for the season here at Whitewater Canyon. <laughs> and there's no water and it's really cold. Um, it's probably around like 50, 55 degrees here today. So definitely not the type of weather for uh, for water ice. So just over here next to Coaster's Cafe is the stage that's set up for Skeleton Crew. Uh, this show debuted back in 2011 and is a uh, very, very popular show and also has been ported to a lot of different Cedar Fair parks down in the, uh, in the United States. So that's pretty cool. Trampoline stuff, other acts of craziness and circus style stuff. And yeah, it's definitely a good show to check out. I believe we have video from a while back of when it was uh, here, like from 2011 or 12 probably. I believe there's footage on a page. If not, well, there might be tonight. Over by the Kingswood Movie, or Music Theater rather, you have uh, an entrance to two of the mazes back here. You've got Terror of London, which is a Jack the Ripper style house with a very, very bloody sign, which is kind of cool. I actually really like this house, very awesome sets in it. Uh, the skeleton key room last year was probably the most terrifying for me as it really tested my limits of claustrophobia. 
And if it's the same this year, I will be passing on that because I don't want to do that again. And over here is Streets of the Undead, which is uh, basically zombies and uh, zom zombies. That's all you need to know. And uh, still one of my favorite facades and still has the tribute to the Walking Dead there with the don't open dead inside uh, sign. And is another skeleton key room, which last year was very lame. So we'll see if they change it up. I know I've heard there's five skeleton key rooms, two of them are the same, three of them are different. So we'll find out which is which. Time Warp is uh, over there, which I'll be avoiding. But here is Ghostly Pines. It's another scare zone, or might be one of the only scare zones. And last year we had a lot of fun in this scare zone, actually, with one of the uh, characters. It was very, very cool and uh, very interactive. Let's see. What do we have here? We got Donaldson. We've got a creepy bird with Dimitri on it. This guy again, C. Jesta. Um, others over here, which we will walk around so we're not getting in people's faces. We have a cool RIP, rest in peace thing there. The grossy. And what's over here is nothing. But usually the scare zone is pumped full of characters who are really, really, really on point. So hopefully that's the case this year. And they've got this cool, this is new, this cool little entrance facade to the scare zone, which I'm going to guess will be uh, all creepy and filled with characters tonight when the sun goes down. So something that's a little bit different this year is over here at Kraken Wagon, as you guys can see, well, you can see Kraken Wagon. Normally this is where the Clowns of Midnight uh, house is, but that house is no more this year, which is uh, a blessing for me because I hate clowns, so that's good I don't go through it. However, the Scare Zone, Clowns of Midnight Scare Zone, is still active and going to be full of creepy clowns this evening. So I'll still have to deal with that. But at least I don't have to go through the house anymore. Not like I chose not to because the whole point of Halloween is to get scared. So, uh, that's cool. As I walk around Wonderland looking for everything hot related during the day, I gotta say one thing that I'm noticing is there doesn't seem to be a lot of scare zones. It looks like there is two this year. Ghostly Pines, like I showed you earlier, and um, the Clowns of Midnight area, where there is no clown maze anymore, but they still have the scare zone. It's really weird. Um, it's odd to see the budget cutbacks. But there's a Leviathan, and as always during this time of year, the lineup probably pretty short. Yep, almost at the stairs only. So, yep, yeah, there's that. So, I think this might be it for during the day. So, uh, stick around, we'll probably have another video coming up of the nighttime festivities of uh, Halloween Hawk here, Channel One.